Hey, this is Aria, and today I want to show you how I created this character. I don't really consider myself a character modeler, but I found this really cool app that's free that helps you get a base mesh rigged with armature, eyes, and all that stuff pretty quickly. So I want to show you that. And then we can bring that into Blender, and I can show you how I created the rest of the look. So download the app from the link in the description, and let's get started. Okay, so once you've installed the app, you can open it up, and you'll get this default uh, setup here. And you can see we're just under the modeling tab here. And what you want to do is just use these sliders to change the look of your model. And you can go through all of these different um, sub categories here to change the mesh. And if you need to see it from a different angle, just use these icons up top here to change the way it's facing. And there's quite a few settings in here, so I'm not going to go through everything. But I know if you go to geometries, you can add things like clothes and hair and teeth and stuff like that. Um, if you need to, but we're going to skip that for now. Just make sure you go into materials and click eyes and then you can click the eye color that you want to use for your model. And then the last thing you want to do is just click this pose animate here. Make sure you're under skeleton and if you click, um, well this is what it looks like um, when you just open the app, but if you click default here, you'll see that it adds a skeleton with fingers, toes, and facial bones for advanced animation. So this is going to save you a lot of time. Um, I didn't realize this at first, so I did this in Blender, and it cost me a lot of time. So if you want to just do this now, and it'll be perfectly set up with your mesh, this is a quick and easy way to do that. And if you want to take it one step further, you can also go to Pose here, and there's a bunch of different poses that you can choose from if you want as well. I'm just going to select none for mine. And then once you're happy with everything, you can click this little icon here and just make sure you save your project um, just in case you want to come back to it. So click these little dots here and save it somewhere on your computer. And then the last thing you need to do is just export. So I chose this here because this is the default for Blender. So just click these dots again, find somewhere on your computer that you want to save it. And then just make sure you click this export button here and it should only take a few seconds to export your mesh. Okay, so once you've got that exported, what we can do is open up a new scene in Blender and just select everything and hit delete. Then we'll click File, Import, and just find on your computer where you say exported your mesh and click Import. Then just hit the decimal key on your numpad just so we can focus in on our mesh here. And what we can do is just click Collection and you can see now that we've got all of our, our stuff here. This first one we don't need, that's our armature, so we can just click that off since we're not using it. And then there's just one more thing that I want to do to our base mesh here. So if we make sure that we've selected the base mesh here, we can hit tab on your keyboard or you can go here and go to edit mode. And then just make sure you're on vertex selection because it won't work on the other options. So vertex, then we're going to hit A and right click and we can hit smooth vertices. And that will just make everything look um, a little bit nicer. So we can hit tab to go back into object mode and we're done with this for now. So we're going to click the little icon here to hide that. We're going to select these two eyes and then hit the decimal key just to focus in on them. The next thing we want to do is add a modifier. So we're going to click here and go to subdivision surface and set that to two. And now we're ready to do the shading for our eyes. So just click the shading tab here. And then what we can do is just click the little icon um, to go into look dev mode. And you can see that everything is black. But if we scroll around to the back, we can see that we do have our texture. So something's going on. So we just need to add a couple more um, settings here. So we want to make sure we add the spec here. Then we could also add the alpha to the alpha. And then make sure you're on the materials tab here and just go down here and there's a couple more things you want to add. First of all, just make sure that this is on if you're using EV. Then the very last thing we need to do is just click this blend mode here and instead of opaque, we want to click alpha hashed. And now you can see that we've got our, our uh, textures shining through. You notice if I zoom really close that this is happening here. The reason why is just our view. So if you click this here and go to view, you can change this to like 0 0.001. And now our it won't clip as close to the camera as it was before. But then you can just change the roughness a little bit and we're good to go. So let's go back to the layout tab here. And now that our eyes are finished, let's move on so we can just unhide our base mesh here. We're just going to click this here, go to the modifiers tab, and then we're going to click create here and we're going to add a wireframe modifier. And we're just going to uncheck replace original and we're also going to change the thickness to 0 
And so now you can see that we've got our, our wireframe mesh around our character. So the next thing we want to do is add a material to our base mesh. So let's go into look dev mode and then we can click materials here and then we're going to click base color. By the way, these are already set up from the Make Cuban app that we exported. So it exported some basic textures as well. So just click this here, bring the saturation to zero. We're going to bring the metallic up to one and we can bring the roughness down to something until until you're happy. And about there should be good. So what we can do now is we want to add some lighting. So if we go into rendered view here, you're going to see that it's just reflecting the gray background. So what we want to do is go into the world tab, click this little dot here, click environment texture, and then we want to find an environment texture that we can use. And if you want to use the same texture that I'm using, just go to hdrhaven.com and search for a gym entrance. And then you can just go down here and click either four or eight K and download it to your hard drive. Okay, so just find the HDR on your computer and then just click open and it should take a few seconds and you'll see the lighting pop up. And now we've got some nice lighting. I can see a few issues here. So just make sure that when you've got your mesh selected, go into your material setting and make sure that screen space refractions is clicked on and also make sure that it's on here as well. And then the last thing I did was I just changed the strength of the HDRI to 0.45 just to get a bit of a darker look to it. The next thing we can do is hit shift A. We're going to add a light. Let's add an area light and you can see that it puts it down there. So let's just hit G to move the light and just bring our mouse over here. Then we can hit our X and if we drag our mouse, it'll rotate only on the X axis. Something like that should work fine. And then you just want to click this little icon here, change the power to 100 and change the color to blue. Now you can see if we zoom in here, it's giving a nice lighting effect. Let's make it a little bit bigger by hitting S and dragging the mouse to scale it. There we go. That's exactly what we want. And if you want to keep it in EV, that's great. I use cycles to render it. If you click cycles here, you'll see you'll get a really nice look once it loads up. Also make sure you're using GPU if you have one. Awesome, so it's looking really great. Let's go back to Eevee. And then the final thing we want to do for the lighting is just add indirect lighting. So if we hit Shift A, we can go to Light Probe here and click Reflection Cube Map. And it should be fine where it is. You can bring it up just a little bit if you want to center it on your model. You can even scale it. And that will just save you some calculation time. Then you can go to Indirect Lighting here and we can turn on Auto Bake and then just Bake Indirect Lighting. And now you'll see that it's a bit more accurate to what it should be. Okay, so now that we've got our lighting set up, we can hide our cube map here just so we don't see it. And we can also go back to our viewport shading here. And the next thing we want to do is create a scalp that we can use to create our hair. Okay, so select the base mesh and hit tab to go into edit mode and make sure nothing is selected. And then what you can do is select this single vertice here. And if we hold control and hit plus, you can see we're gonna grow our selection. Um, and if you go too far, by the way, you can also hit minus to go back, but there should be about good. It's coming a little bit too far um, down on the forehead. So again, make sure you're in vertex select mode. And if you hold shift and alt at the same time and then click this line, you can see that now you can click these and you can bring it back a little bit there. Okay, so once we've got that, what we can do is hit Shift D and then you can hit Escape and it'll leave it in place. And then you're going to hit A on your keyboard, right click, or you can hit P. And then we're going to go Separate by Loose Parts. And so now you can see if we go back into Object Mode by hitting Tab or clicking here, that we've got two separate meshes now. So we can rename this one here, Scalp. And what we want to do is right click right here and Set Origin to Geometry. That way we'll get our origin point right in the middle here before it was down at the ground. And then the last thing we want to do is hit S and we're just going to scale this slightly smaller than the base mesh here. Okay, so now we're ready to add our hair. So what we can do is make sure we've got our scalp selected and we're going to go into particles here. And then you can hit this plus button here. We're going to hit hair and then we'll just change the length to 0.5. And I'm going to change my segments to 20. Um, if you're doing short hair, you may not need to have so many segments, but since I'm doing long hair, I'm going to add a few more. 
you'll notice that nothing is showing up. And the reason why is because if we go to the modifiers tab, you'll see that our scalp still has the wireframe modifier applied to it. So you just want to make sure you hit X on that. And then you'll see right away that the hairs um, go to where they should be. So now what we can do is if you make sure you've got the scalp selected, you can click this little drop down menu here and go into particle edit. Then these are some of the different uh, combs or brushes or whatever that you can use to change the style of the hair. We're not going to go through all of them, but basically if you hold F, you can change the size of your brush. And if you hold shift F, you can change the strength as well. So what I did for mine is you'll notice that if I just start shaping the hair now, um, it doesn't look like there's 25 segments and it's kind of more like five. And I believe the reason for that is because we've got this selected here. So make sure you've got this one selected and you'll see now that we've got a lot more um, points to work with. These represent the 20 cuts that we selected earlier. So now we can zoom out a bit. And what I did was I just clicked and dragged straight up. And we can zoom in a bit. And then what you want to do is just click somewhere near the hair here. And then you just kind of want to bring it down like this. It's a little bit tricky. But that's why we have control Z. And you can spend all the time. Oh, you'll see that I made a mistake here. So the reason why this happened is because I did not have x-ray mode on so make sure you've got that on or else you're going to run into this problem so i'm just going to go back a bit and make sure i do that properly okay so that should work a lot better now so we can turn x-ray mode off and we can go back into object mode and you'll see that we've got this very <laughs> ugly looking head of hair so we need to make a few more changes so Let's go back into the particle settings here. Um, we're gonna skip hair dynamics because I think this is really just a tutorial in and of itself, so I'm not gonna do that today. Um, but we'll just do a few more things. So unclick show emitter, change it to baseline. Let's change this to six. Then we're also gonna go to viewport display, change that to six as well. And you can see now that we're getting a little bit better um, of a curve here. If you go any higher, it doesn't really make much of a difference. So I'm just leaving it at six and then click show emitter, make sure that those are off. And then the next thing we want to do is click children here and we can select interpolated. And then depending on the, you know, the quality of your system here, um, you may not want to go too high. 25 should be more, more than fine for most, most setups here. And if you're doing long hair, just make sure you click long hair here. I found it just gives it um, a little bit nicer of a flow. And then the last thing you want to do is just change the kink shape to wave. You can select whatever one you want, but we're going to use wave for this. And you can see that it's quite wild. So we're going to change the amplitude to 0.05. And you'll notice that there's um, a bit of a bump at the top here. So if you want that to change, you can actually just change the shape. And what this will do is bring the wave further down the hair. So obviously if you go all the way, you're gonna get no wave. So let's make that something like 0.3 and that should work good for us. And then the last thing we need to do is set up a shader for our hair. So we can go to the shading tab here and you can see that it's already using the one that we created for our, our default skin. So you wanna click this here, make sure you make a new material or else you're gonna be changing um, our base mesh as well. And then just click here to make sure we've got our proper lighting. And then what we can do is change the color to brown. And you can see that metallic has still been left on from the um, other material and I actually prefer it um, for this scene. So I'm just gonna leave it on. And then you can hit shift A and we're going to go into um, shader here and we'll go to mix shader and shift A one more time and we can type in translucent and we can just click that right there and then change this to a dark brown as well. And then we can just mix it down to whatever works. And then if you want to use cycles, let's just switch over to cycles for a second here. And you'll notice right away that the hairs are looking really thick. So what we can do is if we go back to the um, particle settings here and click hair shape. We can change this to something a little bit smaller, like 0.2. 
So the last thing we can do to give it um, a slightly nicer look for cycles, make sure you're on the cycles render engine or this won't work and you're going to hit shift A and if you click search you can type in hair and you can see that there's a principled hair shader so you can click that and hook this up instead. And this will give you um, some great looking hair right off the bat. So you don't really need to change anything. There are some settings that if you want to make some changes or change the color, um, you can do that. But that's pretty much it. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. The only other things that I did for my scene was add a very basic surrounding scene, which was pretty much just planes for the walls and the floor. And a couple lights and that was it. Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like and subscribe to my channel and if you guys have any suggestions of what I could do better for this scene or any other scene or something you might like to see, uh, leave a comment below. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye!